today's magical video, we're going to be checking out the NECA Toys Retro Cloth National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation Chainsaw Clark. So how tall is Clark Griswold? Let's go ahead and take the tape measure. He is a retro cloth figure after all, so he's a little bit taller than the conventional 7-inch figures, giving him a height of 8 inches in total. Gets himself a bunch of different accessories, but we'll look at that in a second. Let's first have a look at the figure. Now, I thought it was a perfect time with it being the holiday season to have a look at this figure. And uh, I think last year, actually, I looked at the other retro cloth, Clark Griswold. So it worked out perfectly. Here we have Clark Griswold having just trimmed the tree via the chainsaw and hockey mask that we will be looking at in a second. And uh, I, I do really think I like this figure quite a lot. There's a few little things I would change to the figure, but overall I'm pretty happy with how he came across. Let's first talk about his outfit here, which is a little bit different. Uh, he has a pair of khaki pants, a red top, and then he has a sleeveless bomber jacket, which I suppose if I could nitpick anything to the fabric that they use, it would be the fact that in the movie, it's actually more of a bomber material, so it's got more of a smoother sort of material used. Here, it actually comes across more like a cotton jacket or like a wool jacket. I know, I know. Let's not nitpick the materials that they used, but that's about the only thing I would say I would have changed differently to the outfit that he wears. Other than that, I think it looks actually quite good. I've also mentioned this before in previous reviews, generally of the retro cloth figures, that the retro cloth actually is a smart means that NECA is able to produce many different figures that we normally would not see a regular 7-inch plastic treatment for because really they're only sculpting new hands, new feet, and in this case a brand new head sculpt. Everything else is regular retro cloth figure body. Like there's nothing t different about it and you're just putting a new outfit over top of it. It's very affordable than a company having to basically cast new molds. And uh, again, I really I like retro cloth figures for that standpoint. I'm still more a conventional 7-inch plastic figure collector, but I do like retro cloth figures because it gets figures out there that we wouldn't normally get. So having a look at Clark Griswold's face, I think it really does capture the essence of Chevy Chase in that classic, one of my all-time favorite Christmas movies to watch every single year. While I do think that the sculpt and the paint is done well, I don't know if I would say this is a appropriate expression to be giving Clark Griswold during the moment that this scene commences. Um, if I think back, and I don't have to really think that far back because I just watched the movie, uh, the neighbors are coming back next door and they look over at Clark Griswold and they say, where are you going to put a tree that big? And he says, bend over and I'll show you. He has more of a smirk on his face. Generally, this, by contrast, is a little bit more of a surprise look on his face that I don't really think fits the scene in which this character or this type uh, of expression should have been used. If I think to myself when this expression should have been maybe made, I think I would have released maybe eventually a third Clark Griswold maybe where he's trying to get the lights to work and he can't get those lights to work and he's kicking over the Santa Claus and all that stuff, I would probably have used that face sculpt here than maybe at the time that he's he's using the chainsaw because he's got more almost a, a playful smirk on his face as he's ribbing the neighbors next door. That's, again, a very small gripe. Other than that, I think the face sculpt is right spot on for, I think, looking like Chevy Chase. Okay, so he does come with a bunch of different accessories. Actually, you know what? Before we look at the accessories, I know I just promised you guys accessories. We're not going to look at them just yet. One of the problems I have, and it's sometimes a problem with ongoing um, retro cloth figures, is the, is the feet, the way that the feet are planted. I can get this foot. Let me see here. I can get one of the feet generally planted pretty good, but it seems like one foot always somewhat sits on an angle like this. Sometimes it makes for a little bit difficult to get this guy to properly stand. 
Coincidentally enough, as I quickly say that, I now realize he's standing perfectly fine. But at the time of setting up this review, yeah, he doesn't really seem to sit. It's almost as if the, like the feet are too angled. A bit of an ankle rocker could really fix this problem because the feet are flat, but it seems as if like the way that they're pegged in, they're always generally on an outward angle. Feet are generally sculpted nicely. I just wish that they weren't on an angle outward. They're basically, they're almost making like the shape of a V. They need to be a little bit flatter, I think, for them to get proper footing and not topple over. There we go. Stay. Okay, so he does come with a bunch of different accessories. We'll kind of start with the the least make sense to the more common you know, accessories that one would see for this particular scene. He does come with the little moose um, eggnog glass, eggnog, eggnog mug, the drinking mug that he has in the movie. But I feel like it seems a little out of place to include it with this release of Clark. Maybe with the previous release Clark, sure, or maybe later release Clarks. But I don't know if this particular accessory makes much sense to include with this release. Uh, it does come with also a couple of different interchangeable hands, one of which um, actually holds, as you can see there, the mug perfectly in hand. I, I appreciate it. I, I think the mug glass looks quite good, but I don't think it really fits the scene in which this character is taken from. Just for, uh, by the way, he does also come with another hand as well. Two different hands, so if you want to swap them out, you can certainly do that. So we'll kind of just move our ways out from the more huh sort of accessories to the more ah uh, accessories. One of which being his hockey mask, uh, which looks quite good. And every time I look at this, not only in the scene, but looking at this right now, it reminds me of the VHS cover of Friday 13th, Part 5, A New Beginning. I don't know, every time I just look at it, it reminds me, oh, days gone by, going to Baskin Robbins and then walking along the old video store and seeing Friday the 13th Part 5, the video case in the window. And I always remember seeing this. Uh, the hockey mask looks good and uh, generally just conventionally white, but then you've got the straps on the back. Uh, there is, from what I can see, no real means to actually attach it to his head. Hold on, before you start commenting down below, this guy doesn't know how to put a, a mask on the guy's head. It doesn't look like it detaches. I thought there might have been maybe a little notch or something on the top, but everything seems glued into place. I don't want to dare take that apart. The reason why I say that is it does fit over his head. Let me grab the figure here. It fits actually, If depending on how you want to display the figure, you could have the hockey mask kind of more so up. Or if you want to have it all the way down, let me show you what's happening here. The straps are just, everything is really snug to get this over his head. You do have to do a lot of stretching. It does eventually get over there, but it requires a lot of stretching in order to do that. It doesn't help also that Clark now, well here, versus how Chevy Chase looks now. Now Chevy Chase could probably, he probably could easily fit that over his head because he doesn't have a lot of hair, but um, it does fit over his head, but it, it fits at such a very tight degree that maybe if there was a way to detach one of these somehow to make it fit a little bit easier over the top of his head. The other thing I'm worried about too is, so how, how tight and close that fits to his face. You probably can see it right now. Moving the mask off, I fear, I fear, dare I fear, that paint may eventually start wearing on poor Clark's face as a result of it just way too close, and it's way too tight. Agree to maybe put it on him and leave it be. You can also probably see as why why they gave him the more uh, surprised expression because it makes for a much bigger eye opening uh, through the sockets of the mask, possibly. But then again, maybe a little even smiley face could have gone a long way as well. Then, of course, to complete the package, he comes also with his chainsaw. Chainsaw looks really good. Very large, very beefy looking chainsaw in the yellows. It looks like it's been cast in black and then painted with additional yellow on the sides. Chainsaw blade also looks quite good. But I do run the, into the same problem that I have every single time a retro cloth figure gets one of these. More importantly, of course, Leatherface tends to come with them more than anything else. It's how to apply it into his hand. 
Now, let me just show you how his hand is. He's got a slot and he's got a hole. Kind of dictates ex exactly which part of the chainsaw goes into which hand. Now, it's not simply just a case where you can pry it into his gripped hands because every, both his hands are completely closed shut. So what you need to do is you need to take the little bar here off the chainsaw. It pegs there and it pegs right in there. So it only goes one way. It goes this way like this. And then you unfortunately have the same thing that Leatherface had where you've got a rubbery bottom piece that has to spread out to fit over his hand. Let me just show you what I'm talking about here. This pries open and then you're essentially lining it up, getting it through his hand. And you kind of have to work your way up the, the fist. Luckily it's softer plastic, but it still is a nightmare to get over his hand. And even when you get it into his hand, it's always looking as if it's being stretched beyond the limit that a chainsaw should be stretched. You can't do that with a real chainsaw. Luckily this being softer plastic, you can accommodate that a little bit better. By the way, also let me just point out some really cool little levers and gears and stuff, little switches I should say, on the interior of the chainsaw. Even like the little gas, the, the uh, gasoline tank uh, lid, little cap, has also been put there as well. Or I guess it's right over here. And then you got a little, little pulley. So that's one side of his hand. Then to get to the other side, you have to figure out again which way this is gonna be going. This has to go this way, of course. So then you have to accommodate it by lining everything up, lining it up through his hand, and just kind of working your way through the socket. And then you can kind of twist the hand, bend the elbow, and then just kind of reattach everything the way you found it. It's not always the most successful. Let's see if I can get all that pegged into place. There we go and you can have him holding the chainsaw. But as you can see, it's not the easiest. This isn't so much the problem, it's always these handles here. You need to find a better route to go, and I would even go as far as to say that they should just not even make this soft rubber, but just have this section here just peg out completely. Then you could slide it through the hand, attach it to the top part that isn't going anywhere, and then just plug it back here instead of prying it away to fit it into his hand. At the beginning of this review, I had the hands over his head, which let me again tell you, is not the easiest to accommodate. At one point I was just kind of bending the arm upward and then I found myself taking the chainsaw out of his hand, moving his arms up and then that kind of reassembling everything I've just done here uh, back above his head. So you can kind of get the look that he had when he comes out and he's waving the chainsaw over his head. It's just not the easiest. And then you can go ahead and put the, the hockey mask over top of his head. You can kind of really have fun with it and not have the, the hockey mask all the way down on his face. You could kind of have it up slightly, but a lot of the times their problem is gonna be these little rubber straps on the back. And it just makes for such a difficult sort of application of this. There we go. And then a lot of times you'll, you'll find that if you have the chainsaw, or sorry, the hockey mask a little too high up on his head, it ends up just popping off. Let's have a look at his posability. And to do that, I'm gonna have to now take everything apart that I just so victoriously accomplished and wiggle this out of his hand. And we're gonna take the chainsaw out of his hand. It's just such a pain in the butt. And it's not just Clark Griswold, it's really any character that has a chainsaw. It's always the same sort of problems I have with it. So let's have a look at his posability. His head is on a ball joint, so you get a full range of motion there all the way around as well. Arms hinge outward. Uh, they actually have a universal joint, so you have forward and back motion there. Of course, fabric can always be a problem, so when you are rotating the arms, be mindful that the fabric is gonna start winding and wrapping itself up around the shoulder, and you don't wanna add additional stress to it. That's really the last thing you wanna be accomplishing. He's got a bend to the elbow, as well as a rotation all the way around, and a hinge in his hand. He's got a waist swivel, and he's got a considerable bend, actually, on the legs, moving outward, forward, and back. You got a bend at the knee, and then going back to the feet as well, you've got just a hinge. That's all you've got. Wish that they'll eventually move this, maybe even just to a ball joint. 
putting a ball joint on the end, the bottom of the leg and attaching it into the foot, I think is not only easier, I think, to produce because it doesn't require anything being really assembled. You're not having to put a pin through there and it would make a lot more posability for collectors when it comes to displaying these particular figures. Before we also wrap up this video, I just want to also show you that inside the box that comes with Chainsaw Clark, you get the front of the Griswold house. It's not the easiest, mind you, to stand because really it's, it's just a cardboard insert, but you could put Clark inside and you can display him that, that way as well. It looks really good. I mean, it doesn't really have the most, it's not the most stable of constructions, but at least it adds for a little extra way to display the figure as well. Retro cloth chainsaw Clark, I think turned out pretty good. I like the outfit that he wears and I'm not gonna nitpick the fact that the fabric used for his bomber jacket doesn't really quite match what he should have actually been wearing. That's a very small little nitpick. The base sculpt is actually quite good and I do like all of his accessories, even though I don't think the moose eggnog glass really made much sense to be included with this particular figure. Small strikes, of course, have to be added and two of which being uh, one, the hockey mask is really tight to fit over top of his head. And second, and probably the more glaring problem for me, is the same problem I have with retro cloth uh, leather face figures. It's the fact that that chainsaw is always a nightmare to try to fit through the hand socket of the figures. I would say either give the hands gripped a uh, gripped option instead of making it completely closed, or maybe find the means to detach the bottom part of the chainsaw so you really only have to slide up the chainsaw instead of prying it open like a clamp. I think it adds stress and eventually may warp the look of the chainsaw, which is not really something I want to have happen. Still, it's a great looking figure, and of course for the Christmas season, definitely want to have a look at him, as uh, I know you guys have been asking to see a review of this guy for a very, very long time. So hopefully it delivered everything you wanted and so much more. Now there are certainly still gonna be videos coming up for the rest of this month. Got lots and lots of Christmas videos lined up, Christmas themed videos, so certainly stay tuned to this channel. If you haven't also subscribed to this channel, you are gonna make the naughty list. Hit that little link down below this video, the little box that says subscribed, boom, and you're good to go. You'll never miss a beat when it comes to future videos. Like I said, many more Christmas themed videos are gonna be lined up before now, well, between now and the end of this month, so stay tuned for those. Thanks for watching, as you always do, guys. I'll see you guys next time.